the State of the Union demonstrates, I think, uh, at a really fundamental level that uh, uh, as much as the country changes, uh, a lot of the processes that were set in place by the Constitution uh, persist until this day. The formal process of actually delivering the State of the Union, I guess, really begins when the Speaker of the House formally invites the President, sends a letter to the White House inviting the President to deliver a State of the Union in the House. I'm honored to invite you to offer an address on the State of the Union on January 25th, 2011, before a joint session of Congress. Thank you for your consideration, and I look forward to your response. Sincerely, John Boehner. The State of the Union is a different kind of speech because it is sort of an all-encompassing speech that uh, across the sweep of, of what you're doing, and it makes it a very complicated speech to write. As he finishes extra pages, and I'll just walk over. I just got set, got back to my desk, so it looks like like line edits, you know. And uh, he wrote an insert here and there, some extra stuff. Yeah, it looks good. After we got back from Thanksgiving, we just started a whole bunch of policy meetings that involved just about everyone, you know, every department, every agency in the White House. Years ago, speechwriters and presidents probably had it a little easier because all you had to do was deliver a written version of the State of the Union to, uh, to Congress. And the person who came along and changed that was Woodrow Wilson in 1913. And this was really a bit of a shock to Congress at the time because they were so used to receiving the annual message in written form. It changes in the 20th century largely because of technology. Television comes along and really over the course of a couple decades revolutionizes the State of the Union. And that's when the address really garners a wide public attention. The State of the Union is the one time that the President gets to speak to the entire country and the Congress and, uh, uh, and report on where we are as a country and where he believes we have to go. Uh, what invariably happens, and it's going to happen now, is he reads through several drafts, he's done that already, and then at some point he takes the speech and he puts his own imprint on it. And I think Favreau and everybody else would tell you that the president is the best speech writer in this building and probably in any building you'd walk into. Usually the way it's worked is I'll write a little, I'll send it to the president, he'll write, he'll send it back to me, and then we'll just go back and forth with each other, you know, for pretty much the entire month of January. He drives all of us and himself very, very hard to get it to where he thinks it ought to be. And, uh, you know, he treats the process with tremendous respect and just huge creativity. It's, it's a lot of fun. We have all 551 members of Congress, all the representatives, 435, five delegates, a resident commissioner, and then the 100 senators. Cabinet members, the Supreme Court justices, and the uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff. And in the galleries, there's probably about another 750 people who sit up in the galleries to watch the speech. It's a full chamber. Our Constitution declares that from time to time, the President shall give to Congress information about the state of our union. For 220 years, our leaders have fulfilled this duty. The spirit that has sustained this nation for more than two centuries lives on in you, its people. Let's seize this moment to start anew, to carry the dream forward, and to strengthen our union once more.